Hello and welcome to Webinar Wednesdays from the Deep Carbon Observatory. My name is Katie Pratt and I'm part of DCO's engagement team based at the University of Rhode Island. This webinar is brought to you by Engagement and DCO Synthesis Group 2019. It's my pleasure to introduce you to Samantha Weald of Wiki Education, who is going to share with you some strategies for using Wikipedia in higher education. This webinar complements our work improving deep carbon science content on Wikipedia. So if you have any questions about additional ways of getting involved, don't hesitate to let us know. Samantha has been working as Wiki Education's Outreach Manager since 2014. In that time, she's helped onboard 750 new courses into Wiki Education's classroom program, as well as recruited a dozen institutions for the Visiting Scholars program. She received her MA in Education from UC Berkeley, and despite spending her career working for education nonprofits, knows more now than she ever thought she could about Wikipedia. Now for a bit of housekeeping before we get started, the presentation portion of the webinar should last about 20 minutes, followed by 15 minutes or so to answer any questions you may have. We ask that you type your questions into the chat box as they arise, and Samantha will answer them after the presentation. You can also browse to relevant websites from the resources list on your screen. So with that, I'm pleased to sign off and turn it over to Samantha. Hi everybody, I'm Samantha. I am the Outreach Manager for Wiki Education and I am here to talk to you guys about the work that we do at Wiki Education and some of the ways that you can get involved in improving any kind of content on Wikipedia, but specifically content kind of related to the deep carbon work that you're doing. Um, the resources link that Katie mentioned links back to our website. It's also just typed here. But I will follow up with everybody at the end of the webinar today, just sending you links to all the resources that I discuss, and, um, and then you can get back to me via email and we can communicate from there. So I'm just going to start with a little bit of background about Wikipedia. Why are we here <laughs> talking about Wikipedia when the kind of academic sense of Wikipedia is stay away? Well, Wikipedia is the fifth most visited website in the world, which I think is, is kind of nice to frame it in that way, um, because I think we all kind of know that everybody uses it, but without some numbers, sometimes it's hard to, to wrap your head around this. Um, there are around 500 million unique visitors to Wikipedia every month, and um, across the 290 some odd languages that each have their own unique Wikipedia and all the other wiki sites, there is something like 18 billion page views every month, um, which is, as we know, more people than there are in the world. So it's just really good to kind of wrap your head around how prolific Wikipedia is. Um, in the way that people access information around the world. So the goal of the site is to kind of capture the sum of all human knowledge, which is a really uh, lofty goal, but also something that I think is really good. Um, but there are some problems um, in that there's only a really small number of people who volunteer to work to write the information on the site. So anybody can do this. You don't need credentials. Um, you don't even need a login. Um, you can edit from an IP address without even having to have a username. Um, but the, the whole theory around Wikipedia is that it's the encyclopedia that anyone can edit. And this is still true today. You don't need permission to post anything. You just click save um, and it's live. But when you look at kind of these people who tend to volunteer to write an encyclopedia for free, um, pretty much every study done shows that around 80 to 90 percent of those volunteers who we call Wikipedians are men. And here in academia, we know that anytime you have a, a homogenous population doing anything, you're not really capturing the sum of all knowledge. It's a, it, it doesn't allow for diverse voices um, when everyone writing the content looks the same. And one way that we can visualize some of the problems that this creates, um, this 80 to 90% male editorship, is when thinking about something like biographies. Um, when you categorize the biographies on Wikipedia, what you find is only around 17% of the total biographies are about women, um, which really shows us that we are not at the point yet where we have captured the sum of all human knowledge. We're very much missing content. Um, and I think that's a problem. I think we should really fix it. 
One other way that we can think about these content gaps on Wikipedia is, is also in terms of field. So uh, when you look at this thing called featured articles, and a featured article on Wikipedia is the very best of the best quality of article. A featured article has gone through um, a pretty vigorous peer review process. It's been um, reviewed for how comprehensive is the article in relation to the, the, the topic it's covering, um, what is the quality of the sources provided, do, do the images provided actually reflect the content that's shared? Um, and once this review process occurs, an article can reach this featured article status. Um, and when we look at the topic areas that have reached this status, we very much find a reflection of that 80 to 90% male editorship. Um, over almost 700 articles related to military history and warfare, you know, hundreds of articles about pop culture topics like sports and music, um, video games, history. But when you look into more academic areas, what you find is a really big gap in these high quality articles. And this doesn't mean the, that there aren't articles that exist in these other areas, it just means that those articles aren't the best of the best. And part of the work that we're doing at Wiki Education is just um, acknowledging that there are these gaps and trying to figure out what can we do to help fill them. Um, because we think that, you know, the world deserves access to good knowledge and we want to make sure that you know, the academic part of that, which is all the sourcing, kind of gets connected in. Yeah, and so that's where we at Wiki Education come in. We're a small nonprofit. We're located in San Francisco, California. About 50% of our employees are remote, so we're actually kind of all over the U.S. And we are here to answer your questions, build the tools that you use, make sure you have a successful experience, um, all of the above. And our, our goal here is really, in our existence, is to improve Wikipedia's equity, quality, and reach. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about each of those initiatives now. So um, improving Wikipedia's equity is really, for us, about diversifying not just the content on Wikipedia, but also the people who contribute that content. Um, and one of the best ways that we do this is through our classroom program. And this is our, our flagship program. This is where we ask instructors to, excuse me, replace a research paper in or other assignment in their class by asking students to improve an article on Wikipedia or create an article in an area that might be missing. As part of this process, students create their own Wikipedia accounts. They take trainings that Wiki Education has created. Um, they have to evaluate how Wikipedia works, um, content in your field, and then eventually they actually, you know, use their academic sources available to them through their university library to improve an article in your field. And just by virtue of working in academic institutions in the United States and Canada, we work with a really diverse uh, group of contributors. So a 60, 60 to 70 percent of the students that we work with identify as women. 40% um, of our courses um, identify working with non-traditional students. So part of our work is really just bringing contributors, editors to Wikipedia who don't just fit that 80 to 90% male kind of demographic. But part of our work is also diversifying content and really bringing more equity to the content that exists on Wikipedia. And um, I mentioned the biographies kind of problem where only 17% of the biographies on Wikipedia are of women. And so part of our work is working with instructors in all fields, in all capacities, to update biographies in their field for women and minorities um, who might be a part of that work. So we have students, this is an actual student in our course who updated this biography about Mary Bernheim, who is a biochemist um, before the student worked on this article there was like two sources and two sentences of work about you know her career and her work and after the student came and improved the article there's a whole section about this woman's discoveries um, why they were important to the field her education her early life and then also just more references to support why this woman and her career was valuable and worth 
documenting. Um, so that's another way that we're working to improve the equity in Wikipedia. Um, students in our program also just work to improve articles related to their fields. It doesn't always have to be around this equity lens. Um, and part of that just includes, like I mentioned, improving articles. So taking a look at an article that's re related to your course, for example, the Oceanic Carbon Cycle, which is an article a student in our program improved in the fall of 2017, and evaluating, okay, well, what exists here, what's good, what's bad, what's missing, going to your library to figure out, okay, well, if I can kind of acknowledge that there's something missing here, what kind of sources can I find to back up my work, and then actually drafting that improved work and moving it live, so that the next time somebody comes to that Wikipedia page, they're finding well-referenced, um, comprehensive information about the subject. And so this student did a really incredible job expanding this article. They uh, took the article from, let's see, how many references do I have here? 18 references, which is still kind of a lot at the beginning, to 69 references at the end. So, you know, a significant expansion of the content, a significant literature review included in that work. Um, and that's just a couple examples of how students can improve articles. But if the article does not exist, students can also create new articles. So this is another example, carbon capture and storage in Mexico, where the student actually created this article from scratch um, and did a really great job. So part of the other work that we do here at Wiki Education is to just generally improve the quality of Wikipedia. And we recognize that the students in the classroom program do really good work. But also, we kind of acknowledge the limitations that exist there. Those students are not themselves experts. They don't know anything about Wikipedia when they come to the project. So they're very much newbies, they're beginners, they're, they're figuring it out as they go. But we want to kind of acknowledge that that exists and then also say, how else can we work to improve Wikipedia's quality? And so we actually have a couple other programs that we run. Um, Wikipedia Visiting Scholars is a program that connects longtime contributors to Wikipedia, who we call Wikipedians, um, with a university library to get remote access to those research resources. So most research is behind a paywall. Most people in the world either can't afford to pay for access to journal, um, to journal articles, or even if they could, they don't always have the capacity to really comprehend and understand what's behind that access. So part of this program is just providing that connection for the longtime contributors to Wikipedia who know how to write articles for the site, who want to make a difference, who want to make a high quality impact, but who might just be missing that, that, that uh, access to sources. Um, and so we kind of are the middleman there trying to partner Wikipedians with libraries that have the capacity to provide remote access. Um, and then we actually help track the outcome of that work so that you and they can report back saying, you know, we improved this many articles in our field that received this many page views and look at how we're you know, improving the public's access to high quality research in our field, which is really awesome. Another program that we're piloting this year is our Wikipedia Fellows pilot. So this is um, actually, we're almost done with our pilot, with our first pilot. And this is actually working with experts like yourselves to train them um, in a cohort of either four weeks or eight weeks um, with uh, other experts in your field to write Wikipedia articles. Um, and this work works directly with a member of our staff. You go through kind of like a weekly homework assignment list, just like a student might, um, where you learn, okay, what kind of impact can I make with my time in my field on Wikipedia? And we're going to be expanding our fellows cohorts. So we're our next kind of annual plan, which is the 2018 2019 annual plan. And we're hoping to expand into a few hundred more fellows. So this first pilot, we only had nine people. But um, if you're interested in participating, I think the DCO would be an amazing possible cohort. Um, and I would love to talk to you more about it later on. So the last thing that we're kind of focusing on is the reach of Wikipedia. So how can we think about what articles are the public looking at most frequently and how can we make sure that we that those topics have well referenced high quality information. Um, and so we've actually ran a few initiatives where we're trying to target this kind of reach. 
where we're thinking, okay, well, how can we improve science content on Wikipedia? That was an initiative that we ran our year of science in 2016. Um, our current initiative that we're focusing on right now, we're calling Future of Facts. And this is thinking about what articles are relevant to an informed citizenry. So if we want the public to, to be as well informed as possible about important issues, um, how can we identify those articles on Wikipedia and how can we make sure that they are comprehensive, well-referenced, relatable, readable to the public? Um, so for example, one of our fellows cohorts we're hoping will be focused on the midterm elections that are coming up in November and thinking about, okay, well, what kinds of topics will people be Googling, looking up on the internet, when they're making decisions about how to vote in the midterm elections and then can we make sure that wikipedia is covering all of those topics and issues for all the geographic regions of the u.s in a way that will will help people make informed decisions um, so that's just one example and no matter what program if you're working with one or multiple we are here to support you so we want to help mitigate any challenges that you find and really amplify the impact of your work um, if you teach in the classroom program, oops, we provide instructional design consultation. So that's basically my job. I work with all the new instructors in our program to think about, okay, what course are you teaching? What, how many students are you working with? What kind of assignment works well with your course and how can we make it work? Um, we also provide a whole suite of tools and resources including printed brochures that we will actually physically mail you and your students in your class. So if you have a 30 student class, we will mail you 30 copies of any relevant brochures that will support your students' work. Um, and those brochures are actually a partnership with our online trainings, which we've created to walk your students through the editing process. How do we make an edit on Wikipedia? How do we evaluate an article? What, how do, where do I draft my work and what does that look like? Um, our trainings are there to walk your students through every step. We have a whole bunch of other instructor orientation modules that walk instructors through the work. And then if you're a part of Wikipedia Fellows, we have trainings as well for Wikipedia Fellows that all are all provided um, with our Wikipedia expertise through our dashboard. And this is the tool that we built that actually is our our, kind of our shining jewel, um, which helps track all the work done at, um, in a classroom project by a visiting scholar, it, by a fellows cohort, provides access to the trainings, provides access to our staff, and um, really is able to help instructors manage this assignment in a way that is, is uh, viable for them. It doesn't put the burden on them to kind of recreate the wheel. We have a whole wheel here for you that you just got to hop on and join. Um, and that is pretty much um, everything I have to share today. I wanted to be really brief so that we have lots of time for questions. Um, you can always email me at any time. My email is samantha at wikiedu.org, but I will definitely also be following up with everyone after the webinar, hopefully, with all the links to our resources so that you can participate in a way that works for you, whether it's a classroom assignment or wanting to host a visiting scholar or maybe participate yourself in uh, one of our upcoming fellows cohorts. So I'm going to go ahead and end my screen share and then I will, oh, there we go, I'll answer any questions that people have. Um, I think Josh just popped a question in the chat. I'm going to try and figure out, yep, there it went. Um, so one of the questions that Josh just typed in is, how important is it for professors to be well-versed in Wikipedia before joining the classroom program? I think that's a great, uh, a great question. You don't need to know anything. Our goal is to kind of take you from zero to 100. Um, you, the instructor orientation will walk you through the basic premise of the assignment, how to implement it in your course, how our tool will work to support you. Um, but then that's where also the instructional design comes in, where you and I can set up a call to talk about, okay, well, I have 50 students who are all freshmen, and I want them to do the biographies project. What, what does that look like? Should that be 10% of my overall grade? Should that be 50% of an overall grade? Is it going to be a six-week project? Is it going to be a semester-long project? Based on the learning objectives of your course, it might look very different. So that's partly where our expertise comes in. We want to help you 
like I said, not have to recreate the wheel. We have all this knowledge that we can share with you that you don't need to have. Um, it just isn't necessary. It's just a burden. Um, so yeah, so you don't have to do anything. We're here to support you and our trainings and tools will pretty much walk you through the whole process. So Katie was also asking, can you tell us a bit more about the Wikipedia Fellows Program? Yes, so this is brand new. We had our very first pilot cohort um, January through March. Um, it was a nine week, 10 week cohort um, where we actually worked with three of our partner organizations um, to have their members learn how to edit Wikipedia. So this, the, the original cohort was three members from the National Women's Studies Association, three members from the American Sociological Association, and three members from the Midwest Political Science Association who applied to be part of the cohort and actually went through um, you know, 10 weeks of, okay, your homework assignment this week is to take this training and to think about, okay, what concepts or topics in your field might you want to work on? And then to walk them through that whole process of learning how to contribute, um, actually encouraging collaboration amongst the, the cohort so that people can learn from each other, not just from us. Um, and really the whole goal here is to empower the experts. So people, most people who contribute to Wikipedia are not PhDs, right? It's just somebody who has an interest in a topic and wants to make sure it's better. Um, but we recognize that those people in academia have, have all this knowledge and they have so much capacity to write about interdisciplinary topics, um, but they might not know how. And so we're just trying to help train people up. So at the end of this cohort, um, they have contributed a co in it's pretty significantly to a couple topics in their field that we think are either really high value, um, that have high access in terms of page views, or that might just be really, really important but are missing. Um, and the, in the future, we're going to do hopefully like up to 500 new uh, fellowships where we support people. So it's, it's not paid. It's a volunteer uh, program. You only have to commit, I think, two hours a week two to five hours a week, depending. Um, and we're going to do some that are going to be four week uh, work groups, some that might be six week or 12 week work groups. Um, and then some might be themed. Um, some might be, maybe we would have a DCO one, or maybe somebody here wants to participate in the midterm elections themed cohort and actually impact something around that. Um, so we're going to have themed cohorts and uh, we're going to hopefully scale the, this fellowship program in the next few years and months really so I think our next cohort is supposed to start in May um, and I'm not sure all the details of that we're really deciding the, the the pilot cohort literally just finished in March and so we're kind of doing a report about how that went and then we're now scheduling a plan of action to to kind of grow that program um, so as we work through the details I will definitely send everyone information and let you know how you can participate if that's something that works for you. And I'll let the DCO also kind of send an email to its list about how to participate. Um, and yeah, I'll send once we have that report written up. That's part of, I think, my team. I wasn't on the cohort team, but um, on the pilot, that should be done in the next few weeks. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll be moving forward really fast. Yeah. So if you guys have questions, you can also feel free to put them in the chat. I'm sure there are more. Yeah. That's a good question, Josh. So Josh is just asking that he's heard that people can get discouraged, um, not just whether it's in the classroom program, but just new contributors in general, because the community on Wikipedia is really tough on, on newbies. Um, and and this limits the interest of people to participate kind of in the long term, not just in, in, the, in the scope of the class. Um, so, so I'm going to say a couple things. Um, one, very few, almost no students in our program kind of become Wikipedians. That is not the goal of the program. The goal of the program isn't to create Wikipedians. Um, the goal of the program is to have a really successful classroom assignment. And it would be great if students continued contributing, but we, we're kind of of the, the mindset that Wikipedians are born and not made. 
um, so up to, for some people, this is like an obvious fit. They're like, yes, I want to do this for the rest of my life. This is so cool. But for most people, it's not. And that's totally fine. So I would say the reason why people don't contribute long term isn't necessarily because of their direct experience. It's because like they're just not the kind of people who want to write an encyclopedia for fun, um, which is fine. But that being said, there are definitely I mean, Wikipedia is a website just like any other. There are trolls. There are people who who are not the best at communicating you know by typing but also there's a lot of policies in place that people don't understand there are rules there are guidelines um that you don't even know you're breaking maybe um and and you are if you if you try to contribute without understanding how it works and that's kind of really the reason why wiki education exists is to take that burden off of your shoulders to learn this all and instead to provide you and your students with a really set clear set of expectations that will set you up for success so we want to make sure like students have to take the training so if they don't take the trainings they will not know how to contribute and the number one problem that we find is a student runs into an issue and they're like well, I didn't know that I couldn't, you know, upload that image off of Pinterest. Um, and then you're like, well, did you take the training that walks you through copyright? And the student, you know, we can look and we can see in our dashboard the date and time stamp that your student did or did not take the training. And so then it's like, OK, well, the reason why that work got reverted is because you broke a policy, but you didn't know the policy existed because you never took the training, which was assigned to you and is a part of your grade. Um, so our goal is that the trainings will set you and your students up for success. However, there is always, you know, the possibility that something will get reverted. Most of that happens because students really don't fully understand plagiarism and close paraphrasing. So in a term paper, for example, a student will have to will will make the choice to kind of pad their work by doing a long quotation from a piece that they're describing. Um, and on Wikipedia, quotations are really highly discouraged. Like, unless the quotation is directly relevant to the thing, like talking about a, a, a turn of phrase, which has become famous because of a, a specific book, um, quotations are just not really encouraged and are considered kind of a violation. Um, so that work will get reverted. And it doesn't mean the student has done anything illegal necessarily. It's just that that's just not how Wikipedia kind of wants students to operate. So part of our work, again, is just clarifying those expectations so that students understand that they're not writing an essay. This is not a term paper in tradi a traditional sense. This is very much a encyclopedic review of the literature. Um, and how do, how do you do that when you've never written like that before? Um, so yeah, so that's part of our work is kind of managing and mitigating some of these problems so that students have a really, really good experience. Um, but I would say that it, it really is very rare, like not even we, we track in what we call incidents, which is like problems that students or instructors have on Wikipedia. And I think, you know, this last semester, spring 2018, we we're supporting over 350 courses, um, 7000 students. And like, I think we have like six incidents and a couple of them were image incidents where students didn't understand how to upload you know, non-copyrighted images. A couple of them were students with just full-on plagiarism, which is, you know, could happen in any assignment. And then a couple times a semester, it'll be, well, the student thought that their work belonged here, and a Wikipedian thought it belonged somewhere else. And so it's just a conversation of like, okay, well, where does this content best belong on Wikipedia? And how can we make sure that those, com those conversations and communications are all really positive? And that's kind of where our staff time comes in, is we want to be advocates for your students and for your work. So you are definitely not in this alone. Like, if you ever have an experience where a student in your class is, is having problems with someone on Wikipedia, come to us like that is our job our job is to help manage that relationship to communicate and advocate on your students behalf and to review their work so we also have the opportunity to review all the drafts that students do in your class for the wikipedia project um there are buttons and there are communication tools within the dashboard that literally say like request my draft for review and then that actually communicates your students draft to their assigned Wikipedia expert who's a member of my staff who will actually read their draft and offer them comments and say, hey, this isn't quite ready to go live yet. Um, here are some notes about what you're doing wrong, what you're doing right. Make some changes based on those notes. Um, 
and then I think it'll be ready to be moved live. And the more your students utilize that, the trainings and that staff support, the better they will be set up to succeed in terms of all the other stuff. Yeah. What other questions do you guys have? I yeah, it looks like it. Um, we don't have any more <laughs> questions. So I'm going to wrap things up. Thank you so much, Samantha. That was awesome. Um, I just wanted to uh, point out a couple of resources that are up on the screen right now. Uh, if you're looking to start editing Wikipedia um, and maybe want some inspiration of where to start, we've collated some Wikipedia article stubs that need some improvement that are related to deep carbon science. They're in the files box at the bottom of the screen. Um, and then there's all the um, links available. If you go to the DCO Wikipedia dashboard, you can create an account and join us in our efforts to um, improve deep carbon science um, content on Wikipedia. So um, we have some more webinars in the works this spring and summer. So please keep an eye on the DCO website and newsletter for more information. And if you have any questions about today's topic um, or you would like to suggest a future webinar, please let us know by emailing engagement at deepcarbon.net. Thanks very much. Bye, everyone.